Today on People Now, Kris Jenner gets candid about Kanye on The Ellen Show. Jennifer Garner is all smiles, stepping out after news of her new relationship. We'll tell you all about Daddy Yankee's special tribute to women fighting cancer at the Latin American Music Awards. Sinead O'Connor has a new religion and a new name. Plus, crikey. Sorry. I know, I forgot. Crikey! It's the Irwins. Terry, Bindi, and Robert Irwin give us all the details on their brand new show. It's all today on People Now. Hey, happy Friday, everyone. Woo! Welcome to People Now. Woo, it's the weekend! I know. We made, are you guys excited? The weekend before no? Halloween. Are you? Great. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> all right, no one else Well, is. we're excited. We're really pumped <laughs> because of this. It's Halloween. Even yes. better than that, today's National Pumpkin Day. Mm -hmm. Talk about a spooky October day. It's kind of getting us in the mood for Halloween ahead yes, of the game Yes, and here. in honor of National Pumpkin Day, we are asking you to send in your favorite pumpkin gifts, all right? Cute, spooky, funny, whatever you like. Tweet us those pumpkin gifts with the hashtag people now. You may see them on the show. See how creative you can get with this. Uh, we'll check in on those gifts a little later, but for now, here's what you need to know and what's trending today. Harry and Meghan wrapped up their visit to Tonga on Friday local time, but not without donning the traditional Tongan necklaces and even, that's right, grass skirts after a visit with local craftsmen. They also stopped by the Tupo College, the oldest secondary school in the Pacific, where they were treated to a performance about mosquitoes by the school's boys choir, which had Meghan in stitches. Now the performance complete with flying actions and buzzing noises had the Royals laughing through tears as they watched. It was a great moment. And while Megan was laughing about mosquitoes during the performance, she does have to be careful. The Zika virus has been detected in both Tonga and Fiji, but that hasn't stopped her from engaging with the nature that Tonga has to offer. Megan and Harry visited the Eua National Park Forest Reserve, the, la the last remaining forest area on Tonga's main island. The mama-to-be sought medical advice about the Zika virus ahead of the tour, and adhering to general recommendations by medical professionals has mostly been sticking to long sleeve dresses during her visit. The Royals then headed back to Australia for the remainder of the Invictus Games, but their flight was not without a little drama. The plane carrying the Duke and Duchess had to abort its landing in Sydney because another aircraft was on the runway below. The airplane came within seconds of landing, but the pilot had to pull away again and reapproach when the coast was clear. They were on a specially chartered Qantas flight traveling with staff and journalists. According to the BBC, an announcement from the flight deck said there was an aircraft on the runway a little slow to roll, so the decision was taken to abort the landing. But after a second approach, the Royals are safely in Sydney and all set for their next event, the Australia Geographic Society Awards. We'll be watching for that. Now take a look at this. Daddy Yankee is putting his fame to a good cause. At Thursday night's Billboard Latin Music Awards, he took home the Icon Award for Passion, Power, and Heart, and he proved that with his performance dedicated to breast cancer survivors, joined by the Puerto Rico Symphony Orchestra, they delivered a powerful performance of Yo Contra Ti, or Me Against You, in English, in honor of the women who are in the battle against breast cancer. E.T. caught up with the Icon Award recipient ahead of his performance. He revealed what went into the performance, including speaking to women with breast cancer, telling E.T., quote, it was hard for me. I was trying to contain myself. Thanks to their words, I came up with the inspiration to make the song. It's a powerful song. And the most important thing is the message that can inspire them and motivate them to go through their tests in life and trying to face cancer in a different way. That was his quote. And teaming up with the Puerto Rico Orchestra also was a dream of his. He told ET, that was on my bucket list and I did it. And guys, it was all for a good cause. Good for him. Such an amazing cause. All right, moving on to this. Sinead O'Connor has a new religion and a new name. Last week, the Nothing Compares to You singer revealed on Twitter that she had converted to Islam, explaining in one tweet, quote, all scripture study leads to Islam, which makes all other scriptures redundant. She added she will be given a new name in light of her conversion, Shuhada. In addition to changing her name on her Twitter page, the Irish singer also replaced her profile picture with a photo that reads, wear a hijab, just do it, alongside the Nike swish logo. Logo. After initially saying she wouldn't share photos of her new hijab because it was, quote, intensely personal, the singer decided to post some pics after all, writing in one accompanying tweet that she was, quote, happy. And on Thursday, the singer posted her heartfelt thanks to the Muslim community for welcoming her so warmly, adding, you can't begin to imagine how much your tenderness means to me. The musician was previously ordained as a priest in 1999 in a dissident Roman Catholic group, and she has famously spoken out against the abuses of the Catholic Church, including ripping up a photo of Pope John. John Paul II during a Saturday Night Live appearance in 1992.
Well, Kris Jenner stopped by the Ellen DeGeneres show on Friday and talked a little bit about her son-in-law, Kanye West, who's been making some major headlines. Though the momager has nothing but love for her daughter, Kim's husband, she spoke honestly when Ellen asked about the rapper's recent controversies. Take a look. When they got to the airplane, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so, you know, that is so Kanye. I mean, you know, he was sharing thoughts and things of himself, but I would rather he share some of that stuff privately. In the past few months, Ye has made some major waves in the media. He visited Trump's Oval Office, made an impromptu SNL speech while wearing a Make America Great Again hat, and deleted all of his social media. A source close to West previously told people that those in the rapper's inner circle are telling him he needs to get back on his medication, that he's not doing well, that he's not making any sense. But at the end of the day, Chris made sure to defend West, who she calls family, telling Ellen that he is a, quote, amazing dad, husband, friend, and son-in-law. Hey, one thing for sure is the Kardashians always have their loved ones' backs. All right, on to this. It finishes and we're allowed to turn our phones back on and we have like 15,000 messages saying, saying, wake up. Marcus, yeah. you yawned on TV. <laughs> <laughs> that was actress Carrie Mulligan on Jimmy Kimmel Thursday night, reliving the moment friends called out her husband Mumford & Sons frontman Marcus Mumford for yawning prior to the start of Meghan and Harry's royal wedding ceremony. Social media took notice too with one Twitter user saying their royal wedding highlight included Amal Clooney, the choir singing Stand By Me, and Mumford's poorly timed yawn. The viral moment <laughs> was seen by about 29.2 million viewers who tuned in to watch the Duke and Duchess of Sussex marry back in May. Carrie joked that since there were so many other famous faces in the crowd like Elton John and Oprah, the actress thought the cameras wouldn't film the couple. It's been reported that the two became friends with Prince Harry back in 2013 after a Mumford & Sons concert. It's hey, really funny. sometimes they have to yawn. Jennifer Garner was all smiles while strolling through New York City on Thursday, one day after people reported she has a new man. The camping star was bundled up and looking chic in a blue-green coat, white scarf, strappy blue heels to face the Big Apple elements. Brave on her to wear those heels, I will say, in the cold. <laughs> the 46-year-old actress was out and about for the Fast Company Innovation Festival, in which she spoke about her baby food company, Once Upon a Farm. Sources close to the people reveal Garner is casually dating Cali Group CEO John Miller, who is the former husband of celebrity violinist Carolyn Campbell. The two divorced in 2011 and have two children together. The 40-year-old CEO has not yet met Garner's three children, Violet, Serafina, and Samuel, who she shares with actor Ben Affleck. Garner and Affleck finalized their divorce earlier this month, almost two years after announcing their separation and shortly after Affleck finished a 40-day rehab program. Well, prior to entering the rehab, Jen held an intervention for Ben with hopes of getting the actor help. The two remain friendly as they co-parent their children. A source says that while Jen will always care about Ben, she is ready to move on and seems very excited about the future. Good for her. All right, let's keep things moving. In case you missed any of our shows this week, we are rewinding our favorite Star Trek moments, including Kate Middleton and Meghan Markle style twinning. Amy Schumer's special message for the royal mom-to-be. Natalie Portman's cute courtside date. Plus the Hollywood hunk who is reportedly ready to settle down. It's all in this week's Star Trek's Roundup. Sister-in-laws who twin together, stay together. Meghan Markle was totally channeling Kate Middleton during her Australian tour with Prince Harry. The royal mom-to-be rocked a polka dot dress just days after Kate. But it wasn't the first time we've seen a Markle-Middleton matchup. From tartan jackets and yellow dresses, to A-line cuts and V-neck button-downs, and yes, even the occasional thigh-high slit. It's clear this royal duo is breaking all the fashion rules. And game on! Natalie Portman has one super cute courtside date, her seven-year-old son, Olive. The sporty duo cuddled up in their seats, cheered on the home team, and even rocked oversized gear. Talk about one super cool mama. But she's not the only one. Baby's first Britney. Jamie Lynn Spears and her daughter Ivy were jamming out to Auntie Brit on the gram. And it looks like little Ivy's already got her aunt's big moves. And hit me baby one more time. Amy Schumer and her husband Chris Fisher are expecting their first child together. She announced the pregnancy in a really clever way. Sneaking in the news after first sharing her list of voting recommendations. Nicely played Amy, nicely played. And there was a little Schumer humor. Hey Harry and Meghan, you have some competition. Amy first hinted she was pregnant by posting a Photoshop picture of soon-to-be parents Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. 
First Megan, now Amy, the baby boom is real. And apparently, so is the love between Katie and Orlando. Orlando Bloom and Katy Perry are getting really serious this time around. A uh, Bloom source tells us that he is ready to settle down and he's just very happy. And we're happy to hear that. The pair first split in 2017, but things seem to be right on track. So they've been off and on, of course, but Orlando is in a very different place now than he was last year. He realized that being single isn't all that great and his relationship with Katy really does feel right. Guess there's nothing hot and cold about this romance. Congrats to the happy couple. And guys, stay with us. The Irwin family is telling us all about their new show and the one very unique thing that siblings Bindi and Robert fight about. Plus, Julia Roberts and Dermot Mulroney lead this week's People Picks Roundup. Stick around for all the shows and movies you need to check out this weekend. So it is National Pumpkin Day. We've been asking you to send in your favorite pumpkin gifts for the, the festive holiday. The moment we've all been waiting for. So let's check in on what you've been tweeting so far. I'm very curious. That's really cute. Oh, look little at that puppy. baby corgi. Oh my goodness. Who was that from you? Who was that from? Oh, oh wait. Oh, Talia. The okay, when you start getting tired of pumpkin spice, everything. I feel like that would be so That's claustrophobic. Amazing. If I had that was me. That was me about pumpkin spice stuff before oh, it even started. Is this the started. same puppy? <laughs> <laughs> wait, that pumpkin's not real, right? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, okay, this one we got a little. Okay. Little Balancing Vira pumpkins. Action all right. going. <laughs> and, oh, here's. Oh, um, that's great. Uh, wait, Tom what? Hanks. Tom, Tom Hanks, Hanks yeah, an SNL. SNL but yeah. wait, David as pumpkins, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Amazing. That's pretty good. Wow, these are actually. These pretty are great. Better than I thought. Not that I was doubting you guys. I, I didn't was. Know what a pumpkin for sure. Was gonna be. I didn't know, but those were actually really enjoyable. I thought they were gonna be awful. Those are really, I didn't, really yeah. entertaining. <laughs> All right. Especially the puppy. Keep sending in those pumpkin gifts. I like the creativity here. All right, moving on to this. All right, a very important public service announcement for all of you. Listen up, snack lovers. There's a brand new Oreo cookie coming to stores very soon. I can barely contain my excitement here. This so is a big deal. The Instagram food blog, The Junk Food Isle, revealed an actual product photo of the most stuffed Oreo. <laughs> this is pretty incredible. Wow. That is incredible. Oreo confirmed to people that this rumor has turned into a reality. The cookies will be coming to stores in early 2019. I can't wait to try that. By the way, typically I do the thin mint Oreos, but I'm willing to try the thick for that. I also can't that. tell that from looks the great. picture. Is it is it this big? Is it is it this? I'm is it, thinking like I need ice cream a, sandwich size. I need to something to measure. Like a point of reference, <laughs> yeah. a scale. All right, now for another sweet story that's gone viral. One special girl ran across a beautiful bride in the park and mistook her for a Disney princess. This is a sweet story. Layla is a five-year-old with autism who loves princesses. She ran up to newlywed Olivia Spark for her royal meet and greet. And Layla even called her Cinderella. The couple actually played along. Their wedding photographer snapped this picture. It went viral. So get this, the two reconnected on social media, sparking a GoFundMe page to send Layla to Disney World, and it's raised more than $11,000 for her to meet all the Disney princesses. Dreams coming true for her. I love that story. I love that so much. It's so beautiful. And speaking of a love for Disney, one couple took it to infinity and beyond. <laughs> I like what you did there. On October 17th, Tennessee natives Heather and Clark Ensminger visited all six U.S. Disney theme parks in one day. That's a little crazy. So they kicked things off in Orlando. They hit up all four major theme parks before racing to the airport to fly cross country to hit up the remaining two parks in Anaheim, California. Here's how they did it. Impressively, they made sure to grab a bite to eat and visit one attraction at each place. So they were officially really kind of there. you really enjoy it fully though? No, I don't know. No. But it's still really cool that they did it. The family travels to Disney every year, but had to cancel last year after Heather's father unexpectedly passed away. Clark secretly planned this trip for his wife. It's a very sweet story. Now, Heather is the first to admit that it's the magic that keeps them coming back to the parks. The magic of Disney, everybody. I've never even been to Disney. So what? They, the fact that they did all of them in a day. Can we do a GoFundMe incredible. for Andrea to go to Disney? There are a lot of better things to go fund. Okay. All right, all right. right. <laughs> Moving on to this. Take a look. It's all about encouraging people to fall in love with wildlife and make a difference on the planet. With everything that we do, we're ultimately trying to continue Dad's legacy. We really are kicking the goals that he originally set. Guys, that is a clip from the brand new show, Crikey! Crikey! It's the Irwins. The gang is back on TV showing the world how they are continuing Steve Irwin's passion for wildlife more than 10 years after his death. So when the fam stopped by people now, we had one serious question. What kind of animals can we look forward to seeing on the show? Take a look. 
So at Australia Zoo, we have everything from tigers to echidnas, and then we'll take you to our wildlife hospital where we've treated over 78,000 animals. You'll get the highs and the lows of trying to save wildlife. Our incredible conservation properties where you go to such remote areas that you can't see another building from a helicopter. Wow. It's spectacular. We're gonna do crocodile research and jump on these prehistoric, beautiful creatures. And we'll take you to the Great Barrier Reef to see manta rays and sea turtles and Africa and the sky's the limit. I love seeing all the animals, and yeah. I don't know if you guys remember this, but after John Oliver made a hefty purchase from Russell Crowe's divorce auction, Russell made a generous donation with his earnings in the form of a Koala Chlamydia Award at the Australia Zoo, named after, you guessed it, John Oliver. It was a very public, publicized thing. So how did Bindi Irwin's friends react to the celeb-endorsed marsupial STD units? Listen to this. It was a bit of laughter. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you know, honestly, honestly, all laughs aside, it has made such a huge mm. difference. And both John and Russell are truly wildlife warriors, and we feel so blessed that they are putting the money towards such a good thing. And does such a sweet fam as the Irwins ever have an argument or two? I mean, is it happening here? Well, it does, and the reason is probably exactly what you'd expect. Was, so there was oh, this, wait, there was this, whale yeah, okay. versus the, Robert's okay. dinosaurs. So, so I'm going for the blue whale so we as the saying, largest animal. What's the largest animal that was ever that ever Wrong. around? Blue yeah. whale, guys. But no, there was but a no. there was this type of dinosaur called an Argentinosaurus that was that was larger by length. It was like another 20 feet larger. It was a lot bigger. You got to think of the tail, Bindi. Hello. Yeah, the yeah. tail, right? Yeah. So Everybody knows. My blue whale has been topped. Yeah. I love the Irwins. They're a lot of fun. A good family. Yeah, for every sure. time we stop by, we love them. Now, here are all the other TV and movies that you need to check out in this week's People Picks. This is where our troubles began. Mother Ginger started this war. Don't you know it's dangerous here? you'll be the one to finish it. Now well, this looks great. Disney's The Nutcracker and The Four Realms is here to get you into the Christmas spirit. It's got all of our favorite elements from the classic ballet, but according to the movie star Mackenzie Foy, the best part might have been working with her famous co-stars, Keira Knightley and Helen Mirren. I really enjoyed working with them. They're truly incredible women and they're so kind. Homecoming is a safe space to process your military experience and think about what comes next. Amazon's new thriller, Homecoming, is going to be a wild ride. Adding to our excitement, it stars Julia Roberts. Impossible to describe. That's so unhelpful, isn't it? <laughs> it's this alchemy of people and storylines and lies and fabulousness. Could that all fit on a poster? <laughs> She's reuniting with her My Best Friend's Wedding co-star Dermot Mulroney for the third time. The old friends enjoyed lots of quality time on set, but Dermot might have had ulterior <laughs> motives. Watch. After this many years, I don't really make the habit of hanging out in people's trailers, other people's dressing rooms, with one exception. I do <laughs> find myself drawn to just hang out uh, with my, uh, you know, actor in the scene who happens to be my buddy. I'm not going to be told what to do anymore, Doug. Not by you or any man ever again. Guess which kind of people I'm done suffering. Every punishment that history will surely visit upon Claire Underwood will be exactly what she deserves. It's intense, and this is how it all ends. Netflix's House of Cards is back for its sixth and final season with the ruthless Claire Underwood moving into the Oval. Get your binge-watching snacks ready. This is going to be good. So it may not be Friday the 13th, but it is the last weekend before Halloween. And we're getting you all in the spooky spirit with three wickedly good desserts leading up to the holiday. First up, donut blobs, Yum. guys. Parents Magazine's food director, Jenna Helwig, shows us how to create the seriously sinister sweet. So fair warning, though, you guys, do not watch on an empty stomach. <laughs> Okay, so these are green candy melts, and these are donut holes. So you melt the candy melts carefully, and then I like to use a skewer. This may be a time to not let your kids help with this, but that's your call. <laughs> so you're just gonna dip oh, into boy. the candy yeah, okay. melt. Oh, look, this one's got a little horn now. <laughs> um, okay, here you go. You may all dip, and then, whoa, and then you want to, after dipping, just put your awesome candies on it. Okay. Super easy and super 
fun. Open for interpretation, again. decorate as you wish. That's right. Um, again, also really fun for the kids. And, and okay, what's the deal with this? You just melted this for like a minute in the microwave? Yeah, well, you do a minute and then you stir and then you okay. do a little more, just till it's melted. Ooh, it's a little toasty, a little hot. Oh, it is. But what is Halloween without green goo? It's perfect. That is mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah, this and it's so tasty. All right. Super easy. Let me do an eye. Yeah, eyes are good. I like doing like this would be a great like party tray, right? You have a bunch of them. Oh up, my like, gosh, this is perfect eyeball. for a Halloween party. I feel like this would be a really big hit with the kids because they're a little adorable, a little yes, little blobs. And good for a class <laughs> party too if you're allowed to take treats to your kids' class. Okay. And one trick that we one thing that we learned in the setup here, you got to get in this green stuff quick because it, it hardens. Yes, that's it right. So you want it right out of the microwave. Take a little nibble. Cheers. 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 Thanks for having me. Mm. Mm. Delicious. Pretty good. All right, these are amazing. Thank you so much, Jenna. And you guys, for even more recipes and how-tos, pick up your copy of Parents Magazine or head to parents.com. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. That was so good. They're Get so ready. Cute. A lot of sugar. <laughs> uh, coming up next week, guys, Callum Worthy and Jackie Long are in the studio talking live about their starring roles in the new film, Body. It's produced by Eminem. We're very excited for Plus, this. Plus, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We're sitting down with survivor Juliana Rancic and her husband, Bill. You don't want to miss it. They've been through so much. I know. Their shows and things. A lot to talk about with I know. them. All right. Week Thank up. you so much for watching. For now, we leave you with one last thing from actress Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Have a great weekend. Bye, guys. Hi, I'm Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and this is One Last Thing. The last show I binge watched, um, a couple of shows, probably the second season of Glow. I know what I'm worth, and I'm not apologizing to anyone. Which is just so much fun, and one of my good friends, Ellen Wong, is on that show, and I love her, and she's great. And also the second season of Atlanta. Gap in the clouds and the sun comes out. Hey, boy in the house. Which was brilliant and um, I loved the Teddy Perkins episode. The last time I was starstruck, um, probably about a year ago at an Emmys party, I saw Dolly Parton walk down the stairs in front of me and she was covered in sparkles head to toe and I think she said something like, oh, excuse me, darling, and I almost had a heart attack. My last big splurge, I'm looking into buying a tiny house as like a guest house, which I'm really, really excited about because I've really been into the tiny house craze. So that's my current splurge in progress.